when you're driving this thing. My name is Becky and in this episode of Future Classic we're going to take a look at the Series 1 Lotus Elise. Now in 1996 when Richard Rackham and Julian Thompson brought this car into fruition what they managed to do was define a new era for Lotus. It offered something that had never been offered before. Small, lightweight, mid-engined, supercar looks and all of that for an affordable price. It was a revelation and people just couldn't get enough of it. The Series 1 offered something to the market that they hadn't seen before. The other competitors just didn't quite have it. The Renault Sport Spider was just a little bit too expensive. The Caterham, too raw, not defined enough, and the MX-5 just wasn't sophisticated. In come the Lotus Elise Series 1, and it had everything packaged up in a car that was guaranteed to make you smile as soon as you stepped into the driving seat. The design of this car was something that really sold it to people. The fared in headlamps, the feminine curbs, the fact that you had your very own race car for the road, but yet something that you could use daily. It just ticked all of the boxes and looked the part too. If you've ever wondered where the name Elise comes from, it was actually named after Romano Artioli's granddaughter, Elisa. Lotus's innovation with the extruded bonded aluminium chassis mixed with the K-Series engine, which was a 1.8 four-cylinder, meant for an engaging drive that people were just loving. It was just so much fun, but it was exactly what the company needed at the time. The car was a roaring success, selling over 8,600 units until production stopped in 2001. You could say the Series 1 really was the saviour of Lotus. My name is Andrew Hamilton and this is my Series 1 Elise. What I enjoy about the car, it's, a, it's the marriage of the power to weight, to acceleration, to handling, its directness, its capability and also the noise. It has a wonderful ex exhaust noise, uh, it's very quiet when it's idling when you open the car up you do get a very nice uh, engine note out of it so it's a very encompassing experience it's a very um, it, yeah it's a full-on experience it's as good as it gets I think although it's only it hasn't even done 30,000 miles yet it's been on some long tours it's been to Belgium it's been to France it's been to northern Spain been up to Scotland um, so we reckon we can just, my wife and I can just about get 10 days touring out of it without uh, needing to go find a laundry somewhere. After 20 years, nearly 21 years of uh, ownership, I think it's the fact that you just think, wow, what a nice car this is. I'm really pleased. I'm, you know, this car I will keep until I can no longer get in it, in it, and more importantly, I can't get out of it. <laughs> I've always loved things which are mechanical, and my passion really uh, was driven by my father-in-law. He was a main uh, GM dealer, but his passion was veteran cars, and um, he had a huge collection of veteran cars, became chairman and president of the Veteran Car Club of Great Britain, and I think it was he that really showed me, excuse me, he really showed me what passion about motoring was about, how to look after cars, how to deal with them and how to enjoy them. So we did a huge amount of veteran car rallies with him when he was younger, when we were younger and the kids were younger. Uh, we used to strap in the child seats and the kids would go around the countryside and they loved it. And so those cars are still in uh, the family's possession, uh, or some of them are. I think you always go back to the cars which you loved and admired in your childhood, 
Uh, and as I said, my idea was to go for a slightly older car, um, but uh, I have had absolutely no regret in, in buying the car um, 20, nearly 21 years later. control here, two dials, it's very much focused on the driver and that is what I think is truly the star of this. When you're driving a car like this, nothing is better than when you see the open road ahead of you. <laughs> you can just click through the gears, enjoying every second. You know, I always find with a car like this, the main thing that people are looking for is headspace. You want to go out and drive and just be completely present in the moment and a car like this Although it is involved in the driving, your mind is definitely on the road ahead and nothing else. It gives you a little bit, but it can also take a lot more. And I just can't get over the noise. I mean, it's just... It's addictive, right? I have to 
After driving the Series 1 at least today, I can now understand what all the fuss is about. This car wants to be driven. It's got get up and go, it's got go-kart appeal. It's just wicked fun to take out on a B road, take away for the weekend. And that's everything you want in a car like this. If you want to own a piece of Lotus history, make sure you get yourself a Series 1. You won't be disappointed.